Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Mike Colleen at MikeColleen.com Alright, so I'm going to cut right to it right now immediately. So I was on YouTube and just randomly a video came across um, that I'd seen years before. In fact, let's see. Yeah, this is two years old, but I probably saw this even before that in another channel. And the title of it is Borg, sorry, Borg Queen is Convinced to Stop Destroying Humanity, Star Trek Picard SO2E10. I'll leave a link in the description box. And essentially what I began to notice as I'm watching this video is there was a direct parallel to narcissism. Rather, the entire four, four minute, I think 58 second video was an entire series of parallels to narcissists. So I want to start out with this. Um, again, this has to do with my, my coaching men in the dating and relationship coaching cracked female code course. Is one of the things that I learned a long time ago is that the left brain. Uh, oh, by the way, ladies, this first part's going to help you. <laughs> The left brain says A, and it means A, and that's it. Now, men are probably going, okay, yeah. <laughs> so here's the deal, guys. The female brain, when she's in a right brain, because she's left and right brain, she will, okay, so when a woman's in her left brain, she does the same thing you do. She says A, and she means A. So you're on the same page. You're using the same processor, speaking the same left brain language. But when she switches over to the right brain, now she does what we call double pictures. So the left brain is one picture. The right brain is two pictures or what I call double pictures. I'm actually going to make a video more in depth on this um, in the next video because I really think you're going to enjoy this. By the way, I did turn the music down already a little bit, and it's going to go down a little bit more in about a minute. So when she's in her right brain, she does what we call double pictures. This is when you say A, picture A, picture 1, but you don't mean A. You mean something else other than A. Now right there, I've actually had clients, male clients, flip out, slam their fists into the table, slam my front door, and scream at me, why in the hell would someone say something and not mean it? Because when someone's stuck in their left brain, all they know is A, that's it. There is no B, there is no double pictures, there's just, you say A and you mean A, and that's it. Now the female language is a very beautiful artistic language and it is an art it is something you have to tune in. it's like it's like warming up for a boxing match kickboxing match football you've got to stretch you've got to warm up you've got to tune in and you literally have to be on the same page meaning you have to be open to your right brain like she is otherwise it's going to go right past you because if you're stuck in your left brain and you're here a and that's it you completely missed it like you literally completely missed it so when she shifts over to her right brain she says a but she actually means something deeper more meaningful B so this is how it technically works the information comes into her left brain she's like oh okay so she's on the same page as you and then she shifts and brings the information over to her right brain which gives it a totally and completely different meaning. And yes, there is a way to learn how to do this. She literally can't help it. It's a neurological function that women are designed to do. So for now, men, if you want to learn more to start buy my book, Crack the Female Code. So here's my point. A lot of stuff that I've taught you guys came from what I had learned and developed and discovered over years and years, I mean over decades of creating this brand new course and helping men and women to understand each other. Here's what it is. So, okay, let's go back to the narcissist. So, 
when you, okay at one point in time did the narcissist kind of what's the word I'm looking for did they kind of freak you out and yet at the same time did they essentially convince you of stuff that you just thought was the absolute almost wild almost um mundane but just like how could they believe that and yet they were so convincing that you went along with it here's what it is narcissist or very left brain okay so when you when you look at the movie about the borg they're very very left brain the left brain literally is the mechanical brain literally and physically scientifically psychologically that's that's one of the words they use for the left brain we are borg you must assimilate extremely left brain very controlling and very forceful very logical and very focused to the to literally to the point to where they can't see the bigger picture they're literally blind and oblivious but they don't know it now take a look at the eyes when you saw the borg or sorry i mean the narcissist go into a rage or go into this kind of silent rage where they're holding it in does do the eyes look familiar kind of empty black So here's one thing I learned when I learned about learning how to open up to the right brain, communicate in the right brain way, the right brain process, and the right brain language. It is symbolic. So you say A, but you don't mean A. You mean something deeper, more meaningful, B. Now there's a parallel when it comes to each level. So we, the Earth, the planet, is physically on the third dimension. That doesn't mean there are, aren't other dimensions. See, it's not like the, the next dimension is like out there somewhere, like beyond Mars or beyond Jupiter or something. No, or beyond our solar system or even beyond our, our universe. No, it's right here too. Each dimension builds upon each other to build the next dimension. And it's all here in the same place now. And we can start with a piece of paper. If you draw a straight line, that's the first dimension. Okay, if you draw a straight line and then draw an angle to the right or to the left, 90 degrees, to make a corner or a square, let's call it, you just, de you just developed the second dimension. So that dim those two dimensions literally are here. You have to have the first dimension and the second dimension in order to build up to the third dimension. So you draw a straight line, then you draw a line to the left to the right. Now that's the first dimension and then the second. Now let's go to the corner and let's make a line or take a pencil and stick it straight into the paper. Now that's going up. That's the third dimension. So if you look at a tree going up, that's 3D. So in order to go to the, the higher dimensions, you have to be in the third dimension. You have to be grounded into the third dimension to pop up. So now let's connect these two thoughts. So you've got double pictures or it's, by the way, symbolic language is the same thing. You, you know, like you hold a teapot, and that's a symbol for something else. Or you draw a symbol on a piece of paper and that's a symbol to mean something else. So each dimension does the same thing. For example, here's a spiritual teaching. The Father the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, on the same level, in the Hawaiian teaching of Huna, you have Amakua, Uhane, and Unihipili. Okay? So now let's use some Western two-dimensional words from psychology. So let's go back to the original one. Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. Okay? Well, that's the left brain, the logic. The lower brain, the reptilian, which is the child brain we use when we're first born, okay? And then you've got the right brain, which is the female brain, which is the spiritual brain, the, fi the five senses, the third dimension. 
So all I'm saying is as you go up each spiritual level, you're going to see a repeating pattern symbolically in different ways. Now we're talking about symbology, okay, on every level. So a lot of you think, oh, you know, it's just a TV show, it's just a movie. No, these are not, no, absolutely not. So what the movie is about, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit, but essentially the Borg is just a very left brain being and they feel like they're, everything is about control, everything is about perfection. Whereas the other woman, which I'm going to show you in a minute, she's a very right brain empathic person. She's very emotional, she's very creative, she's very spiritual, she's full of life, she's full of color, she's full of richness and, and, and enriching lives. So there's this extreme dynamic contrast between the two. So one of the things I realized is, okay, so through all my trainings, whether it's psychology, NLP, hypnosis, timeline therapy, energy healing, everything is about healing and integration, healing and integration. Because at one point in time, we were all one unit. Now we are this core unit with all these little parts of us outside of us, okay? And they are separated from us. These are our little parts. This is when you say, well, part of me wants to do this, a part of me wants to do that. It's when we get traumatized. When we get traumatized, we take a little drop of our energy and we push it out and it becomes its own being. Its own, It has its own rules, values, beliefs, you know, strategies, etc., etc. And everything starts to get separate. That's why you get tired easily. So the more you integrate your parts, the more energy you have, the more healthy, the more vital you are. So in NLP, again, this is one level. This is like uh, the, what would that be? The second or third dimension is you integrate these parts. In energy healing, we call it, um, so essentially what we have in energy healing is we have what we call charges. These are, this is like energy. These are charges. And what we do is we do a healing technique where we create something called a clearing. So when it clears, it means it's healed and the energy has come back into the whole and integrated to become one. Now, as I've done this over the years with myself and had energy healings and NLP trainers, etc., work with me and even doing parts integration exercises with myself, when I discover like, oh, I've got a part, two parts separate here that I need to integrate. You can feel it. You become more whole. Okay, because before this, okay, this is, okay, have you ever been scatterbrained? Well, that means you've got a bunch of different parts pinging all over the place. So part, one part wants to go to the right, one part wants to go left, one part wants to go back, one part wants to go forward, one part wants to go forward, but slightly to the right. Now you're getting pulled in all these different directions. Have you ever said that or even seen a movie like, oh, I feel like I'm getting pulled in five different directions? You are. So here's another important piece in eighth grade science, ninth grade, and again in 11th grade, and then I saw it years later on YouTube, is there's a coil, they had this coil which uh, was this wire that was coiled up, and the, if you stretched it out, the length of it was, I think it was 11 miles or 20 miles, I forget. And what they would do is they would have one, at the very end, they'd have like this sensor attached to it, and at the very beginning, they would touch it with electricity and boom, instantly it was at the other end. Even when they stretched it out to where there's no connections in between, they touch it, boom, instantly. Like there was almost no, no, what's the word, no separation. It was like instant, right now, right now. And scientists were baffled as how can you have, you know, miles and miles of coil and you touch it here and instantly it's, it's already at the other end. Now, I, I don't, I'm, I'm losing the technical terms right now because I'm just kind of coming back to me right now, but there's another thing where you can have a particle, okay? So you have a particle here, and then there could be another complete opposite particle in at the end of the universe or in another universe. And when this particle feels something, instantly that particle feels it too. Now, listen to what I'm saying. Listen, I mean this literally. It could be literally in at the end of the solar system and another solar system at the end of the universe. That particle instantly feels it. So if this particle spins, that one spins. If that one spins, this one spins. 
See, the problem with being on the third dimension is you limit your beliefs. You limit your, it's not even beliefs, it's uh, you limit your perception. See, on the third dimension, we think of like the speed of light, you know, or time travel. How do they do that? Okay, let's take Jesus. I can't remember if it was Moses or someone else. It might have been multiple people. It might have, might have been Elijah. Uh, I think it was more than one pe person in the Old Old Testament. Like, well, wait a minute. What are you talking about? Like, well, how, how was Jesus back there? Because you're saying that he said this to Moses and blah, blah, blah. And I am one. I am one with the Father. It's like you got to look at time differently. Where on the sp higher spiritual levels, plural levels, fifth dimension and above, it's not like this physical distance over there. It's think of it like time where let's say you walk over to your right, oh, 100 feet and boom. And now you're in 10 BC or 200 BC and you drop down inside and boom, you're there. Okay, you're before Christ or or before Christ's death, okay? So boom, now you're talking to Moses or you're talk or even if you go further back. So instead of thinking like, well, how do we go back in time? It's it's not a physical dimension when God, how to explain this. The best way I can do it from our third dimensional brain is it's not like we think now like it's way back there. It's like, no, it's just right over here. Take a couple steps over, boom, drop down, boom, now you're talking to Moses, talking to Elijah, you're even talking to Jesus. All right, I found it. It is Mark 9, 4. Uh, this is New Inter International. I'm going to read a couple of them. New International Version. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses who were talking to Jesus. I'll go down to King James. King James is my favorite. And there appeared unto them Elias and Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. How is that possible? Did Jesus do time travel? So you have to remember that time is a construct. It is an illusion. It's not real. Um, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, okay? This is a dimension that was created for us to have this physical experience. It is the three. We are literally inside the thir three, th third dimension, the three, three-dimensional experience, okay? And the way you experience this experience is by your five senses. See, hear, feel, smell, and taste. And this is how you receive all information through your senses. Now, logical people are like, yeah, that's the lower brain. No, the right brain is far more intelligent. <laughs> and the right brain is the open door to God. It is the creative, emotional, spiritual, five senses brain. And as I, as you notice, I said it is the open brain, okay? Open to what? To the spirit level, to the higher levels. All I'm trying to say is this. Just because we're physically in the flesh on this level does not mean that you are limited to this level. That would be like telling a logical person you are limited to the two-dimensional level because that's the brain that you're using. No, we are spiritual beings. Now, here's the deal. Again, there are some people that are not spiritual beings, and I don't mean that they're just shut off, but there's there's nothing home. There's no, there's no spirit inside them. They're empty. And these are the people that absolutely don't believe in God. They don't believe in this. They're, and here's the deal, though. It's because they can't it's not a part of the reality because they don't have any receptors to experience that. They're just empty vessels. And I know when you experience it, like there was this emptiness about the narcissist, it really, really freaked you out. So in this image, this is the Borg that is assimilated with this human. In other words, taken over her body. Do you remember seven of nine? Very same thing. So remember, narcissists live in an illusionary world. They literally think that they have become you. And this is kind of the image of this, this Borg narcissist that took over this actually very beautiful blonde girl who is this person, but with the integration of the Borg. So in this image, she's reaching up and touching her face and saying, why am I crying? 
And the real blonde girl says, those aren't your tears, those are mine. And all of a sudden the narcissist, uh, oh, excuse me, I mean, wink, wink, the Borg begins to realize, wait, I'm me and you're you. And now she actually looks at who she is, that person, the blonde girl that she took over. In the narcissist world, they take on such a delusion that the narcissist begins to believe that they are you, but they're not. This is the beginning of the narcissist who's starting to wake up and realize like, holy shit, I thought I was you, but I'm not. They're starting to realize that you're a completely separate being and that really freaks, freaks them out. This essentially is what they call a narcissistic injury. And the battle that rages within the narcissist is like on the one hand they're seeing reality but they don't want to see it and they will fight tooth and nail not to see it. They literally can't handle it. You, you know how you've heard uh, through a lot of videos, I'm sure, where narcissists have nothing but self-hate and self-anger. They don't like themselves. They, they are absolutely disgusted with who they... I mean, it is on such a deep level that you can't even imagine. And they're waking up to this fact of, wait a minute, you're telling me that this is who I am? No. How to explain this? That's not even. It's like they're so self disgusted with what they've been hiding that when. Okay, you. Okay, when you come along, you may not realize it, but you cause them simply by being a self loving person, an internal being. It eventually causes them to start looking inside. It, and not only that, but being who you are. You started questioning the narcissist where people in the past never did. People in the 70s, 80s, 90s, they never did that. We are going through this unbelievable phase over the last four or five years or so. We are going through something that is absolutely dynamic. It is beyond a shadow of a doubt spiritual. You were the one that got them to pop out of their delusion, even if it was only for a few moments. Simply by being the self-loving person, self, self literally means internal. By being an internal being, simply by them being around you long enough, they unconsciously, accidentally started to gain rapport and started to look within themselves and, oh, and, they, and they started going, whoa, no, no, no. And the more they wanted to, see, the reason why they wanted to be around you is because you're a loving person. You're kind. You're, your energy is amazing. And they wanted to feel that. They wanted to be around it. But the problem is, it's almost like they got addicted to your energy. It was the most powerful drug they've ever experienced in their life. And they couldn't leave. They wanted more, yet they were opening up, but they wanted more. They're opening up, they wanted more. And they finally opened up so much, they saw themselves for the first time probably ever in their life. And they were like, this is me? And they absolutely could not handle it. They couldn't face themselves. They couldn't deal. They're like, no, no, no. And this is this is the um, when they call the narcissistic in, narcissistic injury when they have a complete total breakdown. And this is when you saw this. It was a complete. Oh, how do I explain this? Complete left brain shift. They went full on Borg. They went full on mechanical. Their eyes turned black. No emotions there. This is when you felt that absolute total emptiness inside them. It's when their eyes went black. The dialogue in this video is awesome. So by being around you, it caused the narcissist to do the number one thing that they've been avoiding their whole life, opening up to their emotions, their feelings, their right brain. So the Borg, I mean the narcissist, or actually in this case it is the Borg, 
she's like, "What? why am I crying? And the other girl says, no, that's me. Those are my tears. Those are my feelings. Those are my emotions. So she says to the Borg, they're mine. Those are the same chemicals that you used to, to take control. Dopamine and adrenaline are not produced just by drinking alcohol and singing a torch song. I don't, I don't know what a torch song is, but whatever. She goes on to say sadness, loss, despair. She goes on to say basically what happens when you hurt my friends. That cooks the same neural soup. Only this time it gave me the power to wrestle some of my power back. And the board goes, impossible. Now, I just made a video. I don't remember if it was the last couple of videos, but it was a video that came out one, two, three, four videos before this one where I talk about it. Actually, actually, no, I think I'm going to find it. I think it already came out. Hold on. Yes, the name of that video is Woe Unto Thee, For We Are the Tree of Life, Destroying Narcissist Abuse. In the video, I explain how when they hurt you again and again and again, it caused us what they think is weakness. It caused us to go into our emotions, into our feelings, and thus it gave us our power. Now, here's the thing that I learned working with men. Men that are very left brain logic, they don't have any social power. They have no emotional power, and they don't do as well in sports either. Men that are connected to their emotions and feelings, that is literally like the gasoline or the fuel to a Ferrari. If you don't have any fuel, that Ferrari is going nowhere. Emotions are the fuel. The fuel to the Ferrari is where the power comes from. Without fuel, no power. With emotions, you have power. And this is why narcissists are lazy. This is because they're not motivated. Motivation comes from the right brain. It's the emotional creative spiritual brain this is where your emotions this is where that desire that passion comes from without that you're just basically an ambitious lazy person so in that video I say what you thought was my weakness or what you thought was our weakness is actually our strength and our power and that's where we get it from and what narcissists think is their power their logic is their weakness what I've been saying to you guys for a couple years now is it's not an OT, not either or, it's and and both. So the blonde girl goes, you may have well been on your way if you would have just shown a little bit of mercy. And this flips out the narcissist, or I mean the Borg. So then the Borg flips out and she tries to stab Seven of Nine again. Okay, now she's already stabbed her once and this girl comes in to stop it. And she goes, ah, and she freaks out. She goes and she strikes and it stops about two feet up in the air. And she can't push it down. Her hand's shaking and she's fighting it. Because now she's finally getting empathy. She's finally getting a heart. So all of a sudden these apparition energy, those little balls of energy start filling up the room. She's, and the Borg goes, what is this? The blonde girl goes on to say, the history of the Borg, well, the ending, for you anyways how it always ends for you a lone Borg slayer a united federation they always come for you your top shelf overreaching arrogance they come for you she says do the math in this or any other universe you always lose now, isn't that true about narcissists, how they're always overreaching this arrogant, more money, more power, more, it's like, it, it's like, and they get so out of control, it's like everyone sees it, it becomes so obvious, even the people they had brainwashed and manipulated, believing, oh no, we're the good ones, they start looking like, really, like this is, like it, like where we're at in life right now, things are absolutely out of control, and everyone can see it now. People are seeing right through the lies. I mean, in real life, they're seeing through the gaslighting. I mean, they are, they're picking up on all this going, wow, they've been doing this for a long, long time. Like, we can see it now because they got so arrogant. They just thought, oh, they're just going to believe whatever we tell them. Oh, close your eyes, little precious one, little sweetie. I mean, this goes all the way back to the Wizard of Oz and the Wicked Witch and on and on. 
I mean, what does that sound like? That sounds exactly like a narcissist. They're just out of control. They take more, they get more, and they become more arrogant, more cocky. They get so egotistical, they push it to the extent it's like, well, you do realize we're all, we can all see it now, right? Because they throw caution to the wind and they don't, they, it's like, like we're at a point in time where like they're not even trying to hide it because they don't think they have to. They're delusional. Another point is this. There's a reason why this same story, the exact same story to the letter, has been repeated in so many different movies, so many books, so many, so many countries, and so many everything. This has been going on since the beginning of time. We have gone round and round and round with it. We have been here before. In all sincerity, why do you think the Mother of Dragons literally said she has come to break the wheel? It is over. It is happening right now. In the first time in the history of mankind. It is not a coincidence that, you know, like, what was that called? The, the Mother of Dragons, Targaryens, like that, that TV show. I can't remember the name of it right now. And Star Trek and, and all these different movies, all these radically separate different things. The Bible, these stories are in the Bible. The whole idea of narcissist abuse is from the beginning of the book of Genesis all the way through the, through the book of Revelations. Why do you think this is being told and taught in every single venue and avenue? So the symbolic part of this one clip here is to get your unconscious mind to see this. We have to get you to wake up. Your unconscious mind needs to become conscious. The way you talk to the unconscious mind is not directly. You talk to the unconscious mind symbolically and indirectly. That's why this TV series, the not Star Trek, but whatever they call this. I think it's called The New Frontiers or whatever this movie was called. That's why this scene was in this movie is because it is teaching you. It is educating your mind on what's been going on on the planet to wake you up. Because it's a harsh reality. It is a scary reality. And everyone wanted to stay asleep. And when you tell people directly, the, okay, okay, how many of you have gone to your friends and family and explained to them the shit that this narcissist, they, they did this, they gaslighted you, they did these mind games, and then they started gang stalking you. They don't want to hear it, and they're looking like, are, are you sure you're okay? Are, are you sure that's what, and they, and it's like what one of my friends said to me, because I, I just in a million years can't imagine why someone would do that. And then he said, you know, Mike, I'm sorry, but this just sounds nuts. This sounds crazy. And I yelled out to him, it is, that's what I've been telling you. And he still couldn't get it. Well, here's the deal. He did get it, but he didn't want to see it. It was too scary. So the blonde girl goes, do the math. In this or any other universe, you always lose. It's why you fight so hard. You live with the death knell of your species over infinite timelines. You fear loss just like we do. You long for what we all do. Connection, longevity, discovery. Only you offer it without choice. She goes on to say, I'm saying, what if we ask for it? you and I. So here's something I, I came to realize probably a couple years ago, maybe a little bit longer, is left brain people are trying to find the same things that we're already aware of. Remember around 1991, Pastor Rex had said, you know, science is slowly beginning to prove the Bible because science is really, really far behind. I also wanted to go back to when she said, like, you guys fear the death knell of your species in every timeline you lose. So 
one thing that I've come to realize is they keep finding things about technology that was before the flood. And they're like, well, wait a minute, what's going Like, look, there were, beyond a shadow of a doubt, I'm not, there's not even a question at this point in time. There were technological, when I say technological, I mean more advanced than we are now. There were technological people or beings on this planet a long time ago. And something like the flood continues to happen some sort of total devastation so we, we, I mean, we have found like these long bones for tall human beings the giants that they talk about in the bible etc etc uh, we've got evidence of the of the noah's ark you know the flood i mean there's so much evidence of past oh what was the what's the name of that one um where it's like atlantis all I'm trying to say is we've been here before. And I believe this time is different. It's like we're going to break the wheel this time. And that's what we're doing right now. So when the blonde girl says to the Borg, you know, like every time and every timeline, every time this happens, you lose. This is even in the Bible. It's like the ending is already written. It's because of the way narcissists do. They like they... You know, if you if you learn about narcissists, they they basically not only do they go against other people, they're also fighting against themselves inside. So they always end up destroying their victory, their money, their happiness, their everything. They just constantly self implode. And that's what she's saying to this Borg, like, hey, you know, you guys always lose. So when she talks about, you know, eventually some Borg Slayer or some Federation, they eventually get sick and tired of your arrogance and destroying everything in your greed, and they come after you and they destroy you. Well, that's us. Talk about spiritual. The spirit, God, whatever you want to call it, has been using us on an unconscious level to go into these dark places where these narcissists are, to love them, to be in love, to be, you know, inside, to be internal, what they call authentic self, which I can't stand that because the narcissist used to always say, because narcissists don't have an authentic self and they're jealous that you do. So they kind of almost arrogantly make fun of you. Oh, you're authentic and genuine because they want to be authentic and genuine, but they're so disconnected from themselves they can't. But your interaction with them causes this egotistical collapse. Which opens them up to the very thing that they want from you, but they're afraid to do in them, which is open up to themselves. So they try to take your self, your authentic self, and kind of like literally wear it like a mask. But it doesn't quite fit. And people start to notice this. So essentially what this young lady tries to do is offer like a peace or a truce and say, why don't we work together instead of against each other? Because you always lose, which is very true about narcissists the, and, and the devil. He's going to lose at the very end. He always loses. So the blonde, young blonde lady goes on to say, why don't we, you know, find these people to help them, to give them second chances? So essentially the Borg gets offended saying you'd have us collect, you know, scraps and basically weak people. Like, you know, why, why, like, why would we do that? So the blonde goes on to say to offer them second chances. Hmm. Sounds like Jesus Christ and the cross and all that. So she goes on to say, why don't we take this ship and build a better Borg? A real collective based not on assimilation, <clears throat> meaning forced or tricked, but on salvation by free will. A Borg collective based on each individual's uniqueness. So this is the battle we're in right now. There is a part of society, I would say half of society or close to it, that wants everyone to just fall in line like communism, you know, all that stuff, socialism, do as you're told, fit in. And then there's the, uh, the other half that's moving forward saying, no, it's all about freedom. It's all about being your own unique self. 
So then the Borg says, you're asking us to embrace weakness. And then the blonde girl says, I'm positing, which I don't know what that means. What you t think is weakness is actually strength. My life is a perfect, perfect example. Senior year, we were section champions. One of the football players sat next to me and he goes, you know, it's weird. You're like the toughest guy in school. Like you could kick anyone's ass. And yet you're like the nicest guy in the world. Like you, like basically you, you're a loving person. And I kind of looked at him like, yeah, you're saying it, but you're still not getting it. I didn't say it, but that's what I said. Or that's what I looked at him like. I said, yeah, like hint, hint, wink, wink. Are you getting it? I'm the guy winning the state and national titles. You're the guy that, well, you made the team. What he thought was weakness was actually where you get your power from. And most men don't know this. And this is exactly what narcissists believe. They think that emotions and feelings is weakness. And yet, like, I'm like, there, oh God, there's this guy. He's, he's living out of his van. He goes, oh, I guess someone's getting emotional or something like that. And I'm looking at this guy like, he, I gotta explain what I'm trying to say. Like, he's done nothing with his life. Like, well, what have you done with your life? Who are you? Like, so you're this big, strong guy. And here's the thing about it I could kick this guy's ass in a heartbeat. Boom. And he knows it. So, like, oh, so you think you're strong? Come at me, bro. Yeah, he's bigger. He's taller. Bigger boned. The guy couldn't fight his way out of a paper bag. And I am not kidding. He has zero social influence. He's not an intelligent guy. And yet he thinks he's the smart and strong one. Why? Because you're up in your head hiding from reality in a delusion? Does that not sound like every single narcissist you've ever dealt with? And yet they think that people that have emotions are weak because they have emotions. And yet the fact of the matter is, they're too weak to deal with their emotions. And then she goes on to say cooperation to the Borg. And the Borg says, your, your idea is absurd, but, but also intriguing. And then she goes on to say, imagine members who would fight harder for what they chose, who would lose no battles because they made no enemies. So the first part where we would fight harder because we chose, that's us. Narcissists don't understand that because everything they do is forced. They even got forced into being a narcissist. It wasn't a choice. It wasn't of their free will. And they don't understand. See, they look at us and go, why do they work so hard? See, narcissists essentially are ambitious people, peace people, but extremely lazy. They don't want to do the work because they have no in emotional richness, emotional value. They think everything's about money. No, you could give them a million dollars, but there's no richness inside, so they're just going to blow it. And then there's the part where you would lose no battles because you've made no enemies. That's, that's a concept that narcissists never even crossed their mind. She goes on to say, who would not be discarded or replaced. That's what she says next. What does that sound like? That sounds like a narcissist. So she goes on to say attachments could grow and to deepen. Now here's what I was saying. People that are very left brain, they want attachment. They want, see, why does a narcissist it, it's like they're caught in this this mind trap that they built. They like you, the empath, because you're so loving. They want that attachment. They want that connection so badly because they don't have it inside. And yet they say, oh, that's weakness. Emotions are weakness. And yet it's the very thing that they desire. So going back to what I was saying about science and the Bible and how science is proving the Bible, etc. See, people that are very scientific, they're looking for the truth. They want to know where we came from, what created the universe. It's, it's not, 
it's not like they're looking for something different. They're, we're all looking for the same thing. We're just looking at it from two different perspectives. That's why it's really cool to open up to the left and right brain and to see it from the scientific perspective, from the spiritual perspective, so you can see both. And that's when you start making the connections. You cannot have one without the other. It is just impossible. It's like saying one plus one equals two, but you can't say one minus one. It, it, or the other way around, we're narcissists. Everything's negative. One minus one, one minus three, three minus two. It's like, and they're like, oh, I, I don't believe in that. And like, they'll literally say to you, oh, are you one of those positive thinking people? No, man, I'm negative just like you, buddy. We were always meant to use left and right, in and out, you and me. It was never meant to be this either or thing. It's like looking down into the details under a microscope. You're not meant to be stuck there. You're not meant to say, well, it's either a bigger picture or lower picture or smaller picture. It's supposed to be all, everything in between, everything above and everything below, like the finite details and also the greater, bigger picture and everything in the middle. Do you want to know what all of this is about? A complete misunderstanding of either or, you know, it's, well, it's either A or it's B. No, it's both. So the blonde lady goes on to say attachments could grow and deepen and then she looks down and she goes like seven. By the way, if you've never seen this series, this lady's name laying down is called Seven of Nine because she became a Borg, half human, half machine. But it wasn't of her own free will. They captured her and they forced all this electronic stuff into her spine, her brain, etc. So again, she goes on to say attachments and connections can grow and deepen, etc. And she looks down like Seven. And then she looks at the Borg and said, didn't you once love her too? And wasn't she the best of what we once could be? This is the left plus the right side. So this is actually talking about your left brain and your right brain coming together as one in atonement, meaning on the same neurological wavelength. When the left hemisphere is in rapport with the right hemisphere on the same speed, tempo, and wavelength, now they have clarity in communication. And this is atonement. It literally means at one. And then the blonde girl goes, somebody who used her Borg half to best serve humanity. I said in a couple of videos over the last two or three months, maybe more, is we have things backwards. The left brain was always supposed to support the human right brain, not the other way around. And that's the way we have it right now. Like the left brain is this God, is this. And that, that's the whole thing in the Bible and the serpent and the, the, the forbidden fruit, the tree of knowledge. The left brain is the tree of knowledge. That's the limited intelligence. Your right brain is the open, expansive intelligence. See, the rules of the road were not there to design to control you. It's so like when you come to an intersection, like, oh, there's a stop sign, so I'm supposed to stop. Why? To control you? No, so you don't go through the intersection and kill yourself or kill someone else rules the left brain was always designed to support society to support your happiness not to take away from your happiness which is the way we've been using it for thousands and thousands of years your left brain is always supposed to support your right brain we have it upside down right now rules were designed to give you more freedom to give you more ability, to give you more possibility, not the other way around, and that's how we've been using it. We've been using rules to punish people, to make people feel bad, to make them look guilty. We've been using rules to make people feel bad about themselves. You know, it's funny, the United States Constitution is a set of rules and laws designed to give you happiness and freedom and the pursuit of happiness literally 
in other words, the rules were designed. Like I'm gonna, I'm just gonna read it off. <laughs> Is that all men are created equal? That they are endowed by their creator with a certain un un unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I mean, see, that's the whole point. Rules were never meant to limit you or to hold you back or to make you unhappy. Rules were always suppo supposed to support your happiness, support your freedom, support your su pursuit of happiness, of money, of work, of whatever. Here's the funny thing. The rules are already in place. They've literally made laws and rules to go against the Constitution, to go against our freedom, to against, go against our pursuit of happiness, to go against our freedom of movement, of transportation, and on and on. It's like, it is insane what they're doing to us. Imagine if we looked at everything, all the laws, and get rid of all the laws that limit us, and start creating laws that protect your freedom, that support your happiness, that support your pursuit of whatever career livelihood that you want. Imagine that. Imagine if kids grew up in a world where rules were not designed to punish them, but rules were designed to protect them and to improve their liberty and to give them more freedom. The rules we live by now are all based on fear. We need to, we need to create rules and laws based on love. Whenever you do anything or base anything on fear, you create more fear and more trauma. Whenever you base things on love, you create more happiness, more joy, and more love. And that's what we need to do. I mean, look at the world right now. Are you honestly going to tell me it's a better, safer place? No. The, like, they've made so many laws and so many rules. They restrict us so much we can't even freaking breathe, let alone pay for food. People are violent. People are out of control. That The whole idea of using rules to control people has not made the world a better place at all. Fear-based people will tell you that humans are inherently evil. And those are the laws that they've been creating for hundreds and hundreds of years since our Constitution. And it's only gotten worse. It has not gotten better. Facts. People whose lives are based on love, their perspectives based on love, they think that humans are inherently good. Because you know what? Humans are inherently good. Everybody wants to be happy. Everybody wants to prosper. Everybody wants to live with happiness and joy. They want love. They want to be loved. They want connection. Including the narcissist. In fact, that's really the whole point of a narcissist. They just have some really, really bad strategies to get what they want out of life. They want to be loved. They want to be respected. They even want to be admired. Believe it or not, being admired is not necessarily a bad thing. It's the way you go about it. If you're trying to force people to admire you when you haven't earned it, well, it's not very healthy. But have you done good things? Have you built something? Have you achieved high goals? Have you gone after things? Have you been just a good person? Etc. Etc. Do you help other people? There's all kinds of healthy reasons to be admired. The unfortunate thing is narcissists go about it in a very controlling, forceful kind of way, which is not healthy. So she goes on to say, and wasn't she the best of what we could be? She's talking about Seven. Someone who used her Borg half to serve the best of her humanity. Let's build a universe of sevens, to which the Borg becomes very intrigued. Now, this wrap th let's wrap this up and complete this. So, when I was talking about the particle or the, the 11 miles of coiled wire stretched out and how you hit one end with an electric, electric amps or whatever voltage, it, it's at the other end instantly. Like, it's not even a, not even a millionth of a delay. It's instant. Whereas a particle could be here on the planet and yet another particle or its, its opposite particle is at the end of the universe, the end of the solar system is really billions, trillions, kajillion miles away, instantly turns, twists, feels and has the same energy as that one. So when this one shifts, that one shifts. It's not like a delay, like a split second or even a millionth of a second. It's instant. 
So all of a sudden you feel pain, you have these real negative thoughts. You're feeling their pain, you're feeling their emptiness. This is what's happening. Even though they might be 400 plus miles away or on the other side of the planet, all of a sudden you're in a good mood and boom, you feel something like, what's going on here? All of a sudden you get shame or, or overwhelm. It's like you're instantly feeling what they're feeling and what they're going through. Essentially, this magnetic attraction causes us to pull together, which brings up all of our issues, which causes them to eventually to be healed. So we have these parts inside us that are divided, that are separated, that were once one whole and complete. So a lot of people talk about the twin flame journey. It's where it's your complete opposite comes back and you guys begin to integrate. What I believe happens with this is that actually you begin to heal the parts inside you and they begin to integrate and become one and whole and then come back inside you. Why? Because I do therapy. That's something called parts integration. The overall message of this movie is everything I've been doing in therapy for 30 years is to integrate your left hemisphere with your right hemisphere and also to integrate all these little separated parts into one to come into completion. So the narcissist for sure is going in the wrong direction. They just keep, because that's all they know. They all, all they know is left brain external, never realizing it was always about coming back inside into the internal to re connect to become whole and complete instead of divided when you're divided you are weak when you're whole and complete now you are strong and this is what's going to heal society by healing your heart there is an answer to our problems hey god bless you guys this is mike colleen at mikecolleen.com Please click subscribe, click the like button, and if you want, go ahead and make a donation right down there. There's a pay PayPal link in the description box. God bless you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.